Take it back down. Take it back down.
We have some more seats available if you'd like to take a seat. Just. Just. What's Can have your attention, please? Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. You're making me to lie down in green pastures, leave me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. Lead me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, for I will feel no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod, thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemy. Thou anointed my head with oil. My cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. David said, I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Greetings, family and friends. Today we come to celebrate a life that's well spent. That is in the loving memory of Brother Larry Whitehead. He made his Eternity into the world, May 1954, when he made his exit to be with the Lord on March 16, 2021. So today, we want to give God a hand clap of praise just for his life that's been well spent on this earth. And so at this time, the family has outlined a order worship service, and we will govern ourselves according We'll have a congregational song, Bless, Blessed Assurance. And uh, then we'll have follow up the scripture reading, Old Testament, Reverend Renard Whitehead, New Testament, followed by Minister Ella Whitehead. Then we'll come back with a prayer of comfort. And then we'll have a song of celebration. So if y'all join me and at least one stanza of blessed assurance. Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste the glory divine. Angel salvation, mercy of love. Lord of the Spirit, this Boy, this is my story. This is my story. This is my song. 
praising the Savior all the day long. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. Do I have a scripture reading at this time? The reading shall come from Psalms chapter 116, verses 1 through 5. I love the Lord because he has heard my voice and my supplications, because he has inclined his ear unto me. Therefore, I will call upon him as long as I live. The sorrows of death compass me, and the pains of hell hold unto me. I found trouble and sorrow. Then I called upon the name of the Lord. O oh Lord, I beseech ye, deliver my soul. Gracious is the Lord and righteous. Yea, our God is merciful. God bless the reading of his most holy word. Amen. Amen. reading from the Gospel of John, chapter 14, 1 through 6. Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it was not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you to myself, that where I am, you may be also. And, here, and where I go, you know, and the way you know. Thomas said to him, Lord, we don't know where you're going, and how can we know the way? Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father except by me. May the Lord bless the hearers of his word. Amen. Amen. May we pray. Father of all God, comfort, who comfort us right now during this trial and tribulation in our life, Lord. Lord, we come right now, Father, lifting up this family, this wife, children sister brother cousins aunts many friends dear Lord many dear Lord recognize father that this too shall pass but Lord we just ask for that you comfort us right now Lord you tell us in your word you promise never leave us nor forsake us but you also tell us, Lord, that weeping will endure for a night and joy will come in the morning. Even Apostle Paul told us, he said, now, Larry, the time of your departure is at hand. He said, Larry, you fought a good fight. You kept the faith but you also finished the race. Yes. And then you say, Lord, Larry, there's gonna be a crown placed upon your head at your appearing. But not on the crown, but that crown will be for all of us. And so Father, we thank you for his life. We thank you, Father, for what he meant to all of us who's here today representing we thank you dear lord that he touched many yes, yes. father you know but he's your servant now yes, yes. to be absent from this body yes. is presently to be present with you lord. Yes. so we don't have to worry about larry now lord we know but you left a, a few of us behind yes. to carry on his legacy 
So Father, we ask right now that you will have your way. Even in the midst of this homegoing celebration, Lord, which it is, we can still have tears of joy. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. We can still have tears of sorrow. One thing, Lord, we know that he don't have to suffer anymore. No more, Lord. Thank you. So we thank you, Father, for his life. We give you all honor. We give you all praise in Jesus' name. In Jesus name. Amen. 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 There's a, a song of celebration that's uh, Angela Henderson and Tammy Cameron. Are they here? Anderson and Cameron and the Turner family. I learned on yesterday that from Ella May that my aunt sang a song that was also a song that my mom sang that Larry witnessed his mom sing. And so I'm going to attempt that song. Tanya, my prayers are with you. Have you any rivers that you think are uncrossable? Have you any mountains you cannot? tunnel through God the man specializes oh, yes. Oh, yes. in the things we think are impossible yes, yes, yes. but he he can do what no other power, no other power can do, have you? Larry was on his bed of affliction. Yes. Ever been on your bed, the bed of affliction, the doctors came in. The doctor say he's done all oh, oh, he can do, but God, he specializes. He said, Larry, it's time in all, in all diseases. And so he healed him in his own way. Yes, he did. He can heal. Like no other healer, no other healer can heal. I tell you, God specializes. God specializes. I tell you, God specializes. Yes, he does. And he can do, and he can do what no other power, the Holy Time, we're gonna hear remarks uh, from Brother Robert Ellison and Tom Johnson. And uh, you know, as, as a good uh, author, preacher that I read a long time ago, named Miles Monroe. Dr. Monroe said, You write your funeral while you live. And so, Larry, it's already written his funeral. But we're going to have some to come and they're going to give words of comfort to the family. So at this time, Brother uh, Rock Ellison. Robert Ellison. Yeah. Right, come on. 
Hey, my brothers and sisters in Christ. Let us give uh, Jesus, our Lord and Savior, a hand clap of praise. Praise, praise the Lord. And we have a lot praise to be thankful for. Praise the Lord. Tim, Tim, where you at? Right here behind, in front of you. Uh, Y'all forgive me for trying to talk to this man, but I tell you what, I had COVID, and it ain't no joke. That stuff done killed a lot of people. It's going to keep on killing. I hadn't even taken the shot yet because anything Donald Trump had anything to do with it, I'm kind of scared of it. <laughs> but when I was told that I would be would asked to be a, get some remarks about Larry, a million things went through my mind. I couldn't pick out any one thing to say. But what I can say is this, Larry was a Christian. Yes. Larry was definitely a Christian. Yes, I was honored to be around him in his presence any time I was around him in his presence because he was a good man, a very good man. You can say something mean to Larry and Larry give you the warmest yes, smile. Right. Yes, 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 he would. Say that now. <laughs> but he wasn't an argumentative person. He wasn't. He wasn't going to argue not with you. He wasn't scared of nobody, but he wasn't going to argue with you. That's right. right. Larry loved his family, yes. and there were very few friends that he had, which are here right now. Larry touched every one of us some kind of way. Yes, Lord. So he has spoken his life's story. Yes, he did. If I could have that many people to turn out with mine, I'd feel blessed. That's right. You don't have to have 100 people to come to your funeral. You won't know it anyway, I guess. I don't know. Come on, sir. <laughs> But the ones that are here right now cared about Larry, and I'm yeah. pretty sure Larry cared about them. Yeah. So I just want to say to Tanya and the family, your loss is also our loss. Yeah. Yeah. When I got the news about Larry, I was deeply troubled and hurt, but I know how God works. Yes. Yeah. And everything that God does, ain't nothing we can do about it. We hurt. That's right. But it's just another episode where he's showing us to keep right. looking toward him and doing what he wants us to do so we lay right here. We have nothing to fear. So I tell you, I love you. I love Cat. I want to see the grandbaby that Larry was so gra graciously crazy about mm -hmm. before I leave. Okay. <coughs> I just, God bless okay. everybody. Okay. Bless you. Thank you. Bless you. Bless you. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you everybody for coming and everything. Thank you for trying to have me speak. I like to say I've been knowing Larry for 34 years. And Larry a friend to everybody out here. He'll do anything for you. Get his shirt off your back, shoe off your feet. And I met Larry, I didn't have a motorcycle. I told Larry my father who passed in 05, I said, Larry, I need me a motorcycle. Larry, so I'm gonna get you one. Larry got me a motorcycle. And we rode that motorcycle, rode that motorcycle with my father-in-law. Then I told Larry, I said, Larry, I need to get these parts chrome. He said, bring them to the house. Brought them to the house, got chrome and everything. I said, Larry, how much you owe you? He said, you don't owe me nothing. That's a friend, y'all. Oh, That's a friend. And I said, Larry, you sure? He said, yes, I'm sure. I said, okay then, went on about my business. So me and Larry be on the phone and everything, we always had this certain no, we always made when we knew we were going to ride today or the day after. And I always said, Larry, what we going to do? We going to ride? He said, no, nah, we going to ride. We going to go whoop, whoop. <laughs> That's how I know we going to ride the next day. <laughs> so he going to ride, but he going to ride up in heaven. Yeah. Come on now. And he going to look down on us. Come on now. Glory to God. And if everybody be blessed out here. And tell you need anything, I'm here. All right. Bless everybody. All right. All right. We all are here because of Larry. But as you read in your program, you'll see a word, two words hyphenated. And that's not a mistake. That was Larry's greeting word. That was my greeting word. That was Walter's greeting word. That was Junior's greeting word. And whenever, whenever Larry 
came around his family, his brothers and his sisters, his nieces, aunts, all of us. That was one word he said, kick it boy. <laughs> because that meant something to us. I don't know where it came from, but I know who used it the most and he did. Kick it boy. Kick it boy. Kick it boy. <laughs> all right. All right. <laughs> Son, we thank God for those inspiring words. Uh, Larry, about his life and his legacy. Uh, at this time, we're going to have a poem from Zion Calhoun. <coughs> Zion Calhoun here. And after Zion, we will have a song of celebration again with Miss Hogan. cupcake and rainbows, but also darkness and dust. You know we all love him. He's watching over us with his angel wings. He's up there with my grandma having a blast, you see. So don't cry. Don't pout. He wouldn't want that, you know. He wants you to laugh. Have fun. Even though we'll miss him so. He's there in our hearts pumping with love. We all know he loved us so. Life is hard. Life is short. He may have left us, but he is in pain no more. celebrate his life with us. I got a poem I want to read from um, uh, Uncle Larry's brother. His next door neighbor wrote it for us because that's how many people that Uncle Larry touched in his life. The poem goes, don't worry about tomorrow and what your fate might, br what your fate might be. For by the time tomorrow comes, today is only but a memory. Don't spend your time wondering if, it will, if, it will, if happiness will last. For all to soon, it will pass. Sometimes sadness comes alone, and we seldom realize that it was all happiness, all in disguise. So don't fret when the skies are gray, because in just the blink of an eye, tomorrow is already yesterday. Don't worry about tomorrow, tomorrow will take care of itself. Miss Wonder, your next door neighbor. I don't know about tomorrow. I just live from day to day. And I don't borrow from his sunshine. For the clouds may turn to gray And I don't worry about my future For I know what Jesus said And today he walks beside me for he knows what lies ahead. Larry's gone. God wants us to know what our journey should be. Many things about 
tomorrow I don't seem to under understand but I I know who holds my future He's holding your hand. He holds my hand. Father, let the words in my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight. You are our strength. You are our redeemer. Lord. We need you right now. So speak a word through me. Hide me behind this podium here, Lord, so the people won't see Leonard Patterson, but they'll see you. Lord, we give you all honor. We give you all praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Before I get started, I want to say, Sister Tanya and the Whitehead family, I'm representative of Elizabeth Baptist Church, Dr. Craig Oliver and Lady Cleo Oliver is my pastor. On behalf of Elizabeth Baptist Church and Pastor Dr. Oliver, I just want to let you know he sends greetings and that whatever the family needs, don't hesitate to reach out to us at Elizabeth Baptist Church. All right? All right. All right. There's a word, y'all, in your ear, and I won't be long, but it's out of the book of Ecclesiastes. And it begins at. Uh, Verse, uh, chapter 2, verse 24, which I'll take us into number 3. But it says, Nothing is better for a man than he should eat and drink, that his soul should enjoy good in his labor. This also I saw was from the hand of God. And then Solomon went on down here in this particular scripture. He says, To everything there is a season. Time to be born and a time to die. Amen. I want to talk to y'all just between those two lines there. There's a there's a time to be born. We all reason why we're here, but there's a time that to die. But there's something in between that time yes, before yes. we can get to the death. So I want to talk to you about living your life with a purpose. <laughs> you know, the significant thing about time is it don't wait for anyone. Mm -hmm. Time is always moving and ticking. Solomon, who is the author of this particular book, clearly, clearly states that time, the dash between our birth date and our death date, is the most where people remember you the most. Mm -hmm. People will remember, remember you the most when they know how much you care mm -hmm. and not how much you know. All of us should wake up in the morning wanting to do something good for somebody. Making one's day brighter is really making a difference. But two, we ought to make an impact, but we are called to serve. Yes, yes. Jesus put it this way. He says, just as the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve and give his life a ransom for a minute. I heard y'all talking about Larry and how he loved same thing, Jesus was concerned about serving people. And I do believe that not only he was concerned about serving, but he was concerned about helping people. And I do believe that Larry was concerned about those two things. So not only we called to make an impact, we called to serve, but we also called to love. Oh, let me, let me give y'all this story here because this is made up from the Bible, not me. It's out of Matthew 25th chapter and he says, when the Son of Man comes in his glory, all the holy angels with him, then he will sit on the throne of his glory. All the nations will be gathered before him, and he will separate one from another, as a shepherd divides his sheep from the goats. Yes. And he will set up the sheep on his right hand, and the goats on his left. My Lord. Then the king will say to those on his right hand, Come, you blessed of my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry, 
and you gave me food. That's love, y'all. So I was thirsty, and you gave me something to drink. That's love. Because I was a stranger, and you took me in. That's love. I was naked, and you clothed me. That, that's love. But I was sick, and you visited me. See, we, we, we get the part where you can always use modern technology now when you're sick. Send them an email, send them a call, send them a text message. But then he goes on, he says, I was in prison and you came to me. Then the righteous was answering him saying, Lord, when did we see you hungry and fed you? Come on now. Mm -hmm. Or thirst and give you drink? When did we see you a stranger and take you in a naked and clothe you? Or when did we see you sick in prison and come to you? And the king will answer. Say to them, surely I say to you, in as much as you did it to one of the least of these, my brother, you did it to me. We're called to make a difference. We're called to serve. We're called to love. But here's the thing. We're called also to learn from one another. We're called to live at peace yes. with one another. That was old saying, scripture said, am I my brother's keeper? Brother's keeper. We're called to live in peace with one another, brothers. Some people can't even stand each other for two minutes <laughs> before they start arguing. They said, but we called to live at peace, but we're called to lift one another up. So, living your life with purpose. Two, we're called to impart in someone's life. I heard that Larry part of that motorcycle group. <laughs> yeah. So what I mean by, it? well, what you put in life is what you get out of life. Uh -huh. We're here on earth to be different because God did not make us all the same. And what I'm saying is we can't live in this particular body in earth any kind of way. Yeah. Paul tells us, oh, do you not know that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit who is in you, whom you have from God, and you are not your own, for you were bought at a price. Therefore, glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which is God. God expects all of us, ladies and gentlemen, to live a meaningful and fulfilled life that has promises and great expectations. How I know? Because First Peter tells me. He says, the Bible said, you are chosen generation. I don't know about y'all, but you chose. Yes. Mm -hmm. God chose. Whether you want to be, he chose you. <laughs> he said, you are chosen. You're a royal. You're a royal, royal priesthood. Royal priesthood. Mm -hmm. He said, you're a holy nation because you can't do anything you want to do. You can't live any kind of way. For you his own special people. That's right. That you proclaim the praise of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. God expects us to be different. That's why he puts in Matthew 5, 13. He tells us, uh, you are the salt of the earth. And, but if the salt loses its flavor, how shall it be seen? In the, in the cooks in the house. <laughs> Y'all know when you get to cooking, put a little, little seasoning on that thing. Maybe meat, fish, whatever. It tastes good, don't it? Yes, it does. But guess what? When you walk in the room, you ought to be that light. That's right. You ought to be that salt. Come on now. Something about you, people ought to be able to recognize. Yes. Something about you. But then he goes on, he said, you're the light of the world, a city that cannot sit on the hill. So let your light so shine, ladies and gentlemen, before men, that they may see your good works, glorify your Father in heaven. What I'm trying to say, you don't have to toot your own home. Others will do it for you. All you got to do is just do what God called you to do. The reason we expect to impart in someone's life because we are to glorify God's character and God's nature. Mm -hmm. God's character and nature is to love God with all our soul, with all our mind, with all our strength. And the second one is to love your neighbor as yourself. As I bring it to a close, the third thing I want to share with you is living your life with purpose. You're called to imprint, make an imprint on someone's life. Ecclesiastes 3, 4 says, what profit has the worker from that which he labels? I say, let the works I do speak for me. But let the works you do 
speak for you. Right. Ladies and gentlemen, it's a sad day on this earth when your name is not remembered mm. among family and friends. Leave a legacy, I say, so that others can remember you back. Proverbs 13, 22 says, a good man leaves an inheritance to his children's children. So the question is, what legacy or imprint are you leaving behind? Is it your smile? Is it your laughter? Or is it your demeanor? Or is it your kind of, or is it a labor of love? Paul says, when I was a child, I spoke as a child. He said, I stood, understood as a child. I thought as a child, but when I became a man, Paul said, listen here, the fruit of the spirit is love. You ain't got love, you can't have joy. You don't have love, you can't have peace. If you don't have love, you sure can't have patience. If you don't have love, you can't have kindness. You don't have love, you don't have goodness. If you don't have love, you don't have faithfulness. If you don't have love, you don't have gentleness. And it's definitely, if you don't have love, you can't have self-control. So I say to y'all, as I take my seat, don't be a shadow, but be a traitor. Allow someone to walk into your footsteps. Living your life with a purpose so that when the day comes, Jesus was ask you, why should I let you into his kingdom? You can tell him, Lord, I tried to make a difference while I was here. Larry tried to make a difference while he was here. I tried to make an impact on someone's life. Larry tried to make an impact on someone's life. I tried to impart into someone's life. Larry tried to impart into someone's life. But I tried to leave an imprint on someone's life. And that's the reason why we're all here. It's to fulfill all of God wants us to do. And that's to live your life with a purpose. So I say, therefore, my beloved Larry, be steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, knowing that your labor is not in vain. Let the church say amen. Let the church amen. say amen. amen. God has spoken. Let the church say amen. This time we're going to have the Watkins Funeral Director to come before us and uh, after we will do the committal. Let's give God a hand clap of praise for a life well lived. Yes, sir. We'd like to say thank you to our eulogists of the hour, Reverend Patterson. Thank you for your wonderful words of consolation to console this family. Certainly, last but not least, to the family, we'd like to say thank you for entrusting your beautiful king in our care. We hope and pray that we have done something throughout this week to make your load just a little bit lighter. If doing so, truly our aim has been accomplished. We'll say thank you to the many friends and family who came to support the family. Thank you for coming the last mile of the way. At this time, we have a small token of love that we'd like to present to the Whitehead family mm -hmm. that you may keep and cherish in memory of your precious loved one. Mm -hmm. And at this time, we will have a committal May we pray. Dear Lord, we give thanks for the life of one who has been taken from us, what he has meant to the loving family and friends. We give thanks for the love of God, for the salvation that is freely offered to us by Jesus Christ. Bless us all, we pray, in the name of the one who gave this prayer to his disciples. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth. As it is in heaven, give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our debts, and we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thy is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory for heaven. Amen. For as much as it has, all, has pleased the Almighty God, in his wise providence, take out into this world, the soul of our deceased brother. We therefore commit his body to the ground, earth to earth, ashes to ashes, dust to dust. I heard a voice from heaven saying unto me, Write, Blessed are the dead which die in the Lord, and henceforth said the Spirit, that they may rest from their labors, and their works do follow them. Before we 
return back to our calls. Turn to somebody on the right to, to your left, say, I love you. I love you. With the love of the Lord, ain't nothing you can do about it. Ain't nothing you can do about it. Thank you all. Go in peace. Yeah. I'm going to go over there. I ain't even know that was you over there. Yeah. 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 Yeah